Hey there, welcome to another episode of Legend Sport Videos. Um, today we're going to look at hockey, um, just to give a little background. This is only our third episode. Uh, previous episode we looked at baseball simulations, specifically the Out of the Park 23 baseball sim, which is the engine I use for my Figment Baseball League, which is part of my Figment Sports universe. It's actually the centerpiece of it. It's the first the first one I started. Um, it's it's going very very well we have a very solid group of people involved in it and um, I'm extremely happy with the way things are going going forward I, I'm going to incorporate the other professional sports and I've kind of been doing this on the in the background as kind of a solo project just to kind of build some history because that's typically how I do these things um, in a future video I hope to kind of show how I went about building figment by building something new in a similar vein um, starting with baseball again, only because, you know, baseball was the number one sport professionally in the United States for, you know, the vast majority of the, I would say at least the first half of the 20th century. Um, so today I wanted to talk about one of the other sports, um, specifically hockey, because the thing with, uh, baseball, it's it, in my opinion, very easy to to nail down a good simulation engine for a baseball league and in, in out of the park. I, I believe that sim is outstanding. It, it does everything I need it to do and then some. Um, but finding something similar for, you know, other sports, pro basketball or college basketball, hockey, football, college and pro, all that stuff, there are good simulations out there, but they all um, lack a lot of the customization that out of the park baseball gives you. So I'm going to kind of chronicle, you know, my personal history with hockey simulations and then tie that back into the figment universe and my quest to kind of find the right fit for a fictional historical hockey league. You know, we're not talking about the NHL, but something that's NHL like. So there will be, you know, uh, we, we've had 10 teams, I believe, you know, currently as of the 1941 season, we're down to seven, six or seven, just like the NHL was at that time. I believe in the 1940-41 season, there were seven NHL teams. Um, and then uh, the Brooklyn Americans, which were the former New York Americans, kind of folded. And we had our original six era debuting during during the Second World War. And so um, I want to find something that can do that era which is different from, you know, modern hockey for many reasons. Style of play is, is the one that I'm most concerned with. You know, the financial stuff, the free agency and all that stuff, obviously that didn't exist back then. Um, so that's a piece too, but that's a minor piece in my, in my mind. I want the game on the ice to feel right. You know, assist numbers were lesser. Um, the game itself was played differently than it is played now. Um, you know, hockey, like baseball, has gone through various eras, and this is true of all, all pro sports, kind of, to some extent. But, um, you know, you had high-scoring er eras and low-scoring eras. Just like in baseball, you had power eras and pitcher-focused eras, you know. So this is the same kind of thing. And how do I find something that actually works for that, for specifically the 1930s, the 1920s, the 1940s, so on and so forth? So I'm going to kind of go through that, my, you know, my struggles to be honest to find something that fits for that so uh without further ado let's get started on that okay so i'm going to start off with a 30-ish uh, year old program uh actually it was uh first put out in 1987 and then up this version is from 94 and it's uh lance hafner games Patrick Hockey, version 4.2. Um, Shannon Lynn was the programmer on this. He did a lot of the Hafner games. Uh, the, you know, the older viewers probably have heard of this if they're into, you know, sports games. Um, Hafner made a lot of different sports games, covered, you know, the, uh, the four major sports, football, baseball, basketball, and hockey, plus uh, track and tennis and wrestling and boxing. Um, and maybe one or two others that I'm missing off the top of my head, but um, 
I have most of the games, had most of the games uh, when they first came out. I was a, a big fan because these were, you know, really solid simulations of the sports that they covered. And um, it was really, really useful and, you know, something I enjoyed as far as doing like seasonal replays of different seasons. And, uh, you know, the, the college game, the college basketball game, for example, had, you know, complete the complete division one from you know the like say 88 um which i thought was really really cool and uh so you know that that was back then that was really big because you know now and then the age of the internet we we're kind of spoiled with all the data that's out there all the statistics from past seasons and all the all these sports but you know back in the 80s that was not the case and to have something that would give you you know 300 plus ncaa teams um, plus all the NCAA football teams in their uh, three and one football was kind of a big deal. So I don't want to digress too much because I want to talk about this game, the hockey game. And all of the games kind of fit in the same, um, they kind of work the same way. At least the games that uh, Shannon Lynn pro uh, program because obviously um, typically programmers have a certain style and you know uh, this was no exception. So he did, uh, I know he did this one and the basketball, football, and baseball, I believe. Some of the other sports were done by other people. And, um, you know, I may talk about those down the road because some of them are uh, pretty useful and could be used in, in Figment. As this could have been, I chose not to. Um, and I'm going to go into that right, you know, pretty soon here about why I did not choose to use this game for my fig by figment league so you know without further ado i'm going to start talking about this game specifically so obviously this is a text-based game it's a dos game so this is old school this isn't windows this is running in dos box x right now um, and just to kind of go through what this specific game can do if we look at team management so uh, I'll just show kind of what a well, we'll go into the edit because editing is basically the same as creating so um, if we look at say 82 Here you have all the 1982 NHL teams um, 21 of them And this is kind of the same the same presentation you're going to see in some of the other half their games like I said the football game basketball game, you know basically the Shannon Lynn games and you know, if we were to go to one of the teams, let's say Edmonton, because, you know, Wayne Gretzky's pretty interesting if we hit N. Everything is, is keyboard driven, no mouse really. It's all keyboard driven. It's a lot of textual, you know, text entry type stuff. Um, it's a DOS program, so the, the, the text fields are fairly limited in how long you can put in there. You know, how many characters you can put into a text field. Um, so, you know, you'll see... This is basically how you would create a team as well. So you would start at number one and it would ask you for a team number to put zero and it would assign the next one in that specific disk. So when they say disk, again, we're going back to the DOS era when you know you had floppy disks and things. And so a disk ID essentially is just a season, although you know there were all time grades and all, you know collections, I guess would be a way to put it. Um, this is the 82 disc ID so this is the 82 NHL season so your team name 82 Edmonton and then it's just a bunch of stat entry right you got home home goals for and, and away or allowed rather and the same with away games um, power play percentage I'm not specifically sure what WHL number stands for uh, I don't have the manual for this game I did at one time but that was a long time ago and just like some of my old you know board games uh, my, you know, my old APA baseball and things like that, they're, they're gone. I, you know, <laughs> it's been 30 years. So, um, but basically this is just your power play percentage number. So, um, obviously they were really good on the power play, 25%. That's really good. Um, shorthanded percentage, that's more penalty kill. It's kind of a, a somewhat mislabeled maybe in my opinion. Um, it's just, you know, how, how many times they killed off the penalty, basically. So 82%. Um, and then you have your away goals allowed, home points and away points. That just kind of shows you, you know, the breakdown of how many points they scored at home. And not points scored, but rather the points from wins and ties. So obviously most teams are better at home than on the road. That's also the case for the Oilers. 
the colors. These are just picking num numbers. I think there were 16 color, 16 different colors, and you can make various combinations to kind of get this down here, which is the colors that will display for that team. Then that you also you also would enter your shorthanded goals for and against at ho you know, both home and away, uh, just to kind of show how good they were at doing that. You know, both home and away, obviously. The league shooting average again. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this means, and that number actually looks wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me, to me. Um, shots on goal per game, and the arena name, and then the coach. You know, Glenn Sather, obviously. So once we have all that filled out, we hit zero and continue, and now you have skaters. So you can have up to 26 skaters, and the reason it's 26, I think, is because they're assigned a letter. When you look at the um, the strategies and things. So um, there are 26 letters in the alphabet, obviously. So you have up to 26 skaters. Um, typically, they're entered, I think, by the uh, number of points scored in the season, kind of, you know, in descending order. So obviously, Wayne Gretzky would be the first one. If we open up Gretzky, see each player can be assigned uh, two positions. You can also, they also have uh, wing, defenseman, and forward, so that you have, you know, the ability to basically do those, you know, Kind of utility man type players that can do many things um, which is a lot which is very useful for the older seasons when there were guys that did do you know more combo players that played both you know forward and defense occasionally there were players that did that back in the uh the old days um, then you do just basic statistics right games goals assists etc um, all this stuff is pretty obvious the defensive rating that's really the only rating that you enter manually because that's not something that's easily captured in any statistic um, with the way you know statistics are now and and it's been it's been known for a while like plus minus is not a particularly useful statistic in terms of determining if a player is a good defensive player because it's it's really it's line based you could have you know a great defensive player with you know four bombs and his his plus minus is going to be bad um, because it relies on what happens while that player's on the ice, whether he contributed to the goal being scored either way or not. So um, that's the only one that's you know somewhat subjective to kind of assign. Um, and as we go forward and I look at some other games, um, other hockey games, you'll see more and more ratings come into it where you know you're going to enter values for skills essentially you know attributes um something more along the lines like what we would see in out of the park baseball where players actually have ratings now the ratings are backed by stats and that's the case here as well but there aren't any visible ratings in hafner aside from this defensive rating so once you have that again you move on you go back to the screen with all your skaters you would enter all the skaters for each team and we move on and we have goalies obviously and then you have the up to four goalies per team uh, if we look at grand fjord again it's games played minutes all your basic goalie statistics right um here we don't even have any ratings it's all space it's all backed by stats so you know, you're going to look at um all the all the values for the uh for the player you enter all of that in and it's going to use that to kind of drive how he performs in your games continue again so now we're back out here um, you can also view the team if you wanted to if you just hit enter if you've already looked at a team you can hit enter and go right back to that same disk again let's pick Edmonton hit end for no changes and then you just see the breakdown of what basically was entered right so here's the team stats here's our um, player stats over two pages because we have 26 skaters and then our three goalies so you can see everything um, obviously it calculates and displays your sh shooting percentage if you're a skater and your save percentage if you are a goalie. All right. So some of the other things, we go back to the main menu here. So um, you can look at stats, you know, and you can look at stats. Um, if we go back, well, we don't have any. I don't think we have any games played for this particular disc right now. Yeah, there's no st there's no stats. So, um, but you have full stats. You have an encyclopedia. You can compare the uh, replay to actual. You can merge uh, stat files from different uh, different installations essentially. 
and you can uh, obviously go back to the main menu. That's the thing that's impressive to me about this game, because we're talking about a game that's over 30 years old for the first iteration. Obviously, they added on to it as time went on and computers became a little bit more powerful. But if you think about the way technology was in the 80s compared to what it is now, um, to me, this is an impressive uh, job by Shannon Lynn to produce this particular um, game with the depth that it has. Um, I think it's an excellent job. And at the time, this was, you know, outstanding to me, just truly outstanding. Because you can, you know, you have leaders, standings, records, you have a schedule, room, scheduler where you can enter the schedule, autoplay it, look at your box scores. Um, you do have the ability to put it on the hard drive. Um, essentially, you don't need to do that with DOSBox. With, if you're unfamiliar with DOSBox, basically you mount a drive as the C drive, and then you kind of navigate through DOSBox, and it acts like a virtual DOS um, environment, which is nice. And then all you really need is this here. You configure the drive. You tell it based on your mounted drive. This is actually on an external drive of mine which I have as drive G. But here I've mapped G to C in DOSBox. So the G drive on my PC is actually the C drive in DOSBox. And then I can just, you know, uh, assign which folder my teams go in, my lines go in, my stats go in. Um, I haven't actually played much with this. So I don't have the lines and stats set up. And that's why we got that error when I tried to look at stats. But you just enter those and then it'll ask you if it's okay, hit yes, you go back. But um, if we look at like scheduler, you can actually enter a schedule. If you have one, you can, no league files, all right. So basically you can create a schedule. You can uh, assign what type of mode for each game in the schedule or for a team. And by mode, that's just, are you playing it yourself or is it autoplay? And if you're playing it yourself, you have various options. You can play, um, you know, the, you can have, you can always play the home team. You can play the away team. You can have computer versus computer, which is the same as autoplay. Although you can actually watch the game be played out. And when I say watch the game be played out, it's more of a textual thing. Um, there are no graphics per se in this. It's just, you know, play by play, essentially. So, um... This is all really, really good stuff. The key thing with this, because it's an older program, is everything is manual text entry, uh, no mouse, no GUI, you know, graphical user interface like we have today. Um, this was, you know, this was state of the art in the, in the early 90s, but now obviously the state of the art has changed a great, great deal because, you know, technology and computing power, uh, storage space, everything is just, um, vastly superior to what it was 30 years ago, which is what you would expect. Um, so my final thoughts on this particular game are just simply this, that while it's, as, while it's really, really good for what it, what it did back in, back in the day, and it's actually good now too. Uh, if you want to you know, run a season, you'll get great, uh, great statistical accuracy from this game engine. It, it's, it's excellent. It really is. Um, but you're talking about a game that's old. And so anytime you're talking about something old, it's, you know, there are usability hurdles, let's say, to, to, um, to get over if you're looking for an experience, you know, similar to what you would get with something that's, you know, been produced a lot more recently. However, um, you know, this is an excellent game and I would recommend it to anybody who just wants, you know, a nice solid statistical uh, simulation of hockey you're going to get great results um, there's a Facebook group I believe that has uh, all the Hafner games you might have to hunt around a little bit maybe search Hafner in, in Facebook and you might find the group there you can actually get the games you can get the games and the seasons um, talk about the games get tips and so on from people who still play these games because these games are good so um, you know as far as figment goes though because i'm looking for something i can do fictional with and you can do fictional with this the problem is since it's all statistical based statistics based rather you have to enter all these guys manually which means i would also have to generate statistics for my fake players so um, one thing you could do in theory is base it on real players take real player statistics and enter them with a different name basically to kind of mask who they are 
But again, um, I'm also looking for something I can do an online league with. And this was not built for that because the internet was not, I mean, it existed, but it was more, it was government owned and, and run back when this game was out. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot of access to it. And, uh, you know, there were no real online leagues. You could play this, you know, face, face to face, you know, head to head. You can have two human players making line changes and so on, strategies. But it wasn't really designed for uh, multiplayer online play, which is, you know, what I'm looking for in my Figment thing. But this was a good opportunity to go back and look at um, the first hockey game that really impressed me with its power, uh, flexibility, and just, you know, accuracy. So, again, I recommend Hattrick Hockey highly. Very, very good game. As long as you can get over the fact that it's a 30-year-old game and you're going to have to do a lot of things by hand as opposed to, you know, uh, drag and drop and, and so on. So, um, I will now move on to another game, which is also a DOS-based game. It's a little bit more recent, uh, more like 25-ish years old than uh, 30 years old. And we'll talk about that uh, here in a moment. I'm going to exit out of this and load that up. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here we have Appa Hockey version 4. This is from the late 90s, so 98 there according to the copyright at the bottom. Now, unlike Hafner, this is actually based on a board game. I mean, uh, Appa or APBA if you if you prefer. Um, obviously made uh, board games, still, do, still does make board games. Um, and they have a hockey game, and they still have that hockey game. Uh, I believe it's kind of evolved a bit since the 90s uh, to improve it and kind of smooth over some rough edges. But um, I have not played the board game probably since the 80s um, myself. But the computer game came out in the 90s, or I guess 89 here. And uh, I started playing it in the mid-90s, probably 95 or so and this was the engine I used for my very very first online league um, because you had the ability through a helper program called uh, APA Hockey Commissioner which also still exists and is still available for download uh, because there are still people who play this game as well just like the Hafner game and what that enabled you to do was you could send a league file out, you know, zip up some files and you could email it to people, which is, you know, kind of the way it worked back then. And they would be able to load it into their, in their app, a commissioner program, make their line changes, set strategies and so on, and then send you back a file that you could import as the commissioner. And then you play your games here through the game engine itself. Um, so it worked and it still does work. Uh, but it obviously, again, it's not as uh, user-friendly, per se, as what we have now when you're talking about something like OOTP Baseball, which I know I keep mentioning that. I keep coming back to that. The point, in, the point for me is that that game is um, what the standard should be, in my opinion, for an online league engine. Because everything is re really smooth. You do it all through the game itself. You load it up. You, As the commissioner, you load it up. You open your league, you import all the export files from your GMs, and you run your games, and then you do an update. And from the GM side, once the commissioner runs the games and updates there, you go in, you pull down the new, the new league file within the game, and you have your updated file. You can see all your results, look at your box scores, watch re replays of the game in 3D if you wish to. Um, you know, set your pitching, set your lineups, do all kinds of things, manage your minor leagues, and then you, you do a quick export to FTP, sends the file up to a server um, for the league, and then as the and then it just the cycle just repeats itself. The commissioner goes in, pulls down the exports from the GMs, and runs the next sim. Very very smooth, very very streamlined, very easy. Um, there's some setup involved, but it's easy to use. So uh, looking for something like that in hockey is. Um, Basically, it doesn't exist, really. I mean, it does, but it's not quite as as smooth and easy. Uh, so, looking at Appa Hockey, back then, you know, people would send me a file over email, and I would pull it in. Um, eventually, I set up an FTP server, and they could actually, you know, upload the file, and then I would go in and pull it down. But um, in the very, very beginning, we did it via email. 
Um, so that's kind of how it works. So we're going to take a look at this game. It's another DOS game, so you're going to see the same kind of presentation, let's say. Um, it looks fairly similar, right? I mean, you've got your options with numbers, essentially a couple letters, to choose what you wish to do here. Um, I'll show you the commissioner program as well. Uh, in general, this isn't that much different from Hafner. It's got pretty much the same kind of functionality. You have a scheduler, you have the ability to look at a roster, you have the ability to look at your stats. Uh, you can look at your league and, and teams and, um, you know, basically run a, run a replay or, a, you know, a draft league or whatever you might want to do. It's very uh, powerful. But again, it's a DOS-based program, and so everything has to be done kind of manually. You know, you can mouse around, but there really isn't, you know, if I click, there's nothing going on here. So um, if I wanted to look at, say, stats, I hit number three, and then here you have your statistics, right? If we want to look at individual leaders, you can look at computer statistics, which is what we would call, you know, replay, or just the games you've played out, basically. <clears throat> and then real, I just want to see the real stats. How did these guys do? Again, this is actually the 82 season. So this is the same season we just looked at in Hat Trick. And it populates, right? So obviously Wayne Gretzky right up there at the top because he has <laughs> a ridiculous season in 81, 82. Um, you know, Mike Bossy, Peter Stasny, uh, he, the, the obvious guys, right? The stars that, that, you know, people who are as old as I am remember these guys when they were playing. And I was a kid at the time, but still I remember... You know, uh, Rick Middleton. I remember these guys playing. And so it's, you know, it's cool to, to play with these guys. I mean, I enjoy playing with the older stuff, too. I never saw Maurice Richard play, but I like to play, you know, 50s hockey uh, with Gordie Howe and Richard and, you know, those guys from that era playing. Um, because you, if you're a fan of the sport, you've heard of these guys. And so, you know, that's, that's always the attraction for people who play these games is to play with these guys that are, you know, you remember from childhood or you've heard about or read about or whatever it may be. Um, it's very cool. You have, <clears throat> you also have the ability to print from here. And again, I don't think I mentioned this in, in uh, the Hafner game, but that has printing too, but we're talking about a DOS program. So um, if you remember the old uh, printer connectors or the parallel connectors to, to hook up a printer, obviously we don't do it that way anymore. There are some tricks you can do in DOSBox that enable you to print. Um, also, people really don't print that much anymore. Um, it's kind of a waste of ink and paper in, in a lot of cases. So uh, you also have the ability to like print to a, to a file, print to a text file. Um, and there was another thing that I didn't mention about, you know, typically when you have an online league, you want to have, you know, HTML reports. And... Um, or reports in general that you would put up on a website for people to look at. And you can't really do that with this. It has to be more manual. So it's like a manual process to create the, the reports and so on. And so here I'm just kind of paging through the various uh, stats. And you can see you get a little bit more. I didn't really show the stats in, uh, in Hafner, but you get a little bit more bang for your buck here with, with APA. Um, a lot, you know, obviously we didn't have real stats for some of these, you know, fights and corner battles and hits and so on. You know, the, the statistical package in this game is better than it is in Hat Trick. And as you go further down, further, you know, get closer to what we have today, obviously the statistics you're getting are going to be better. Uh, things just evolved, you know, you have more computing power, more storage. It's just easier to, uh, to track all this stuff. We can look at the league data screen, which is where you just set up your conferences, your divisions, uh, your rules, right? So we have, you know, the number of periods, the minutes per period, whether or not you want overtime, sudden death, how long is overtime, so on, right? You can read all that. Um, Zamboni, I think if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I played this game, but if you have that turn to yes, when you end the period, it'll come out and it'll... It'll like wipe the wipe the ice surface, um, you know, kind of kind of low res because again, this is a uh, this is a DOS program, but it's just kind of a little break in between periods, and it's a little kind of amusing to watch. But 
Um, probably not to watch more than once or twice, I guess. But again, you can see there are a lot of options here for your league um, to, to do. Uh, you can have team rosters, right? So if we wanted to look, we want to look at Edmonton again just to stay consistent. Again, you can go screen or printer. I'll go screen. And this this is where we see a, a difference again from from the half half their hat trick game because these are ratings and these uh, are backed by stats. But you also have the ability to tweak them, edit them yourself, right? So um, obviously you see Gretzky position. So again, guys can play multiple positions. Um, Anderson is a winger, can play left or right. Coffee can play either defense spot and so on. And then the numbers underneath the, the it, you know, obviously you have the positions listed again, uh, across the top. Each one of those is their rating for def defense at that position. So zero means they don't play there, right? Uh, three is essentially average. Um, below three is kind of bad. And uh, fours and fives are guys who are, you know, very good defensively at those positions. Uh, game F would be game fatigue. So that's how many minutes they can play before they start to get whacked by fatigue by the game engine. Um, kind of prevents you from overusing guys. I mean, I'm sure everybody would love to have Wayne Gretzky skate 40, 50 minutes a game, you know, uh, but it wouldn't be realistic. So uh, the game has the ability to, to track their, their ice time, and once they outplay their real-life ice, uh, ice time in a game, they'll start to have fatigue effects, which will make them worse. Um, and then across the top, going again left to right, you know, skating, speed, Passing, forecheck, physical play, intimidation, clearing, uh, rock, penalty kill, block, and face off. So those are all pretty self-explanatory for uh, hockey fans. Um, typically five is the highest rating you can have. We see some sixes for Wayne Gretzky because he's Wayne Gretzky. Uh, so he has a six in skating and passing because he was uh, obviously extremely good um, a, a, a passer. And, and a skater, but um, obviously when you put up 120 assists in a season, you're an incredible passer, and um, so he gets the he gets a six, which is very rare, and you won't see it very often, except for players of that you know very very elite kind of uh, Hall of Famers of Hall of Famers, you know, um, the very very cream of the crop. So you can see their ratings. Um, some of those what I'll call secondary ratings, like penalty kill. You won't see twos very often. You'll see a one or a zero. A zero is kind of average or, you know, they don't add anything. Um, a one is uh, someone who's good on the penalty kill. So, same thing with blocks, um, shot blocking. If you see a one, that means the guy is, is adept at blocking a shot. A zero just isn't. And obviously with forwards, it's a little bit less of a, of a you know, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say requirement, but something that you're looking for. It's more of a defensive thing. So the defenseman, the better defenseman, will will have a one there for shot blocking. Face off uh, typically would be centers since they take the most face offs. But you'll see some wingers with face off ratings, obviously as well. Um, uh, clearing, that's again kind of more of a defensive rating. You know, clear the puck. Um, so the, the, the good defensive defensemen will have good ratings there. You see some fours with uh, Lowe and Fogelin. And, uh, you know, Coffee's only a, only a two. He's more of an offensive um, defenseman. He also has a couple sixes there as well in skating and, sp and speed. And a five passing. Obviously, he's, uh, you know, one of the better offensive defensemen in hockey history. Um, so you get the general, general gist there. Of what the team looks like, and I think we missed the goalies. Let me go back. Let me go back. Whoops, that's not where I wanted to go. Okay, so th this is just the team data. So this is where you would set up your team, enter information about the team, um, their city, their name, the code, which is just you know the abbreviation for their for their team. Home ice, rink length, which I think is a neat feature. Um, Boston Garden was famous for having, I think, a 188-foot ice surface. 
So you can have that in there. It kind of, in theory, I think, uh, impacts the, the play. You know, a little bit less space for the, for the players, um, which I always thought was a neat thing that uh, most hockey sims don't have, but this one does, which I think is nice. Uh, you assign them their colors, what division they play in, and then you have their statistics. Um, obviously, you see wheel and league. So this, this league actually has played games, so there are computer-generated statistics. But just looking at that right there, what you see there, you can see how good the game engine is in that goals for, uh, there's a 12-goal difference over 80 games. That's pretty good. Goals allowed, there's a 5-goal difference over 80 games. Also pretty good. Um, the power play uh, numbers are, are pretty pretty well online. Shorthanded numbers, the shorthanded goals, all that stuff is really, really close. Um, which is a testament to the statistical accuracy of this as a replay engine. Um, obviously, when you're talking about a draft league, then you don't really worry about how they look real to league on a team level, but you still want it to be close on a league level. Uh, that's the goal. The issue with a draft league also is you have different usage for guys. Um, you might not have as many teams, so your, st your stats will get skewed a bit, but uh, in general, you want... You want everything to be realistic. That's always the goal. Um, these are strategy things you can set. You know, you can kind of use the down arrow and the tab to move through fields and change values. Um, I really never use the in-game, like the in the DOS game uh, strategy settings because I had APA Commissioner, which <clears throat> is much easier. It's got a GUI. It's a Windows program, so it's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot easier to use than to kind of tab through and enter, you know, P2 or 3 or whatever it may be for each of these settings. Um, and this is, a, you know, a second uh, strategy screen where you can, you know, base it on who you're playing. And all of this stuff is duplicated in the Apple Commissioner program, which I'm going to show you momentarily. But um, this is good because you can, you can really tweak your defensive settings. Um, the game gives you a lot of strategy. Uh, capability. So once you've made your changes, you can choose to save them. I won't. <clears throat> so you kind of get the idea of what this what this game can give you. Obviously, you also have the ability to do playoffs, which you didn't really see in Hat Trick. In Hat Trick, you can do playoffs as well. You just kind of create a second a second schedule for it, and you run it as almost its own season, essentially. Um, so App is a little bit more evolved than Hat Trick. And it's got great statistical accuracy. It's obviously based on the, the board game engine. Um, and the board game engine can give you really good results as well. Um, so this is just, you know, it's a great uh, hockey simulation, essentially. But again, it has the same shortcomings for, for my purposes, for Figment as, as Hattrick did. Only because it's based on real players. Now, I can create fake players, and it would actually be a little bit easier here because even though you enter stats for everything, um, and those stats are used for things like um, the number of shots a guy will take and whether or not, uh, how accurate he is at shooting and things like that. You also have that, that long you know, assortment of ratings which drive the action just as much as your statistical stuff because hockey, unlike baseball, um, baseball, you can quantify a lot of things based on the stats, aside from like defense. Defense is always tricky with any of any of the sports, figuring out how do you rate defense. Um, it's so there's always going to be some you know subjectivity in that in that regard, especially with something like hockey, uh, just to kind of figure out how you know if a guy's a good defender, like. It, again, it's something that, as a fan, you can watch and you can say, yeah, this guy's a good defender. And there'll be arguments about it, too, like who's better or, or whatever. But generally speaking, the, the, the really great defensive players are recognizable when you watch them play. Um, but you have to quantify that in some way and put that into the game. So, you know, to generate a fictional player, it's possible. But again, it, it's almost like you would need to really base it on a real guy. Um, which isn't so much what I was, would be interested in doing. And then there's the whole player evolution piece, um, because from year to year you want guys to evolve, get better, uh, age out, so on. And there's no way to manage that, because there's no career mode. And that's another thing that OOTP does and does well. Um, there's, 
there's some you know stratification in in that as well um, on the OTP side, but I don't want to get into that all that much. It does progress players and it does it well. Um, the degree to which it does it well is is debatable amongst people who play the game, but it does a good job in my opinion. Uh, there's nothing like that in in Appa or in Hat Trick, so that's kind of a, a negative from the for those two games. So ultimately, obviously, I wouldn't choose to use this as well. So now I'm going to move on to something more recent and go into why. Um, I ultimately chose not to use that either. So let me, uh, I'll just, you know, reset again. Oh, wait, I didn't show you uh, APA Commissioner. So we'll do that right now. Welcome back. Here we have uh, the APA Commissioner program. I've actually opened up the same exact league we were just looking at in, um, in the main APA game. And so this is basically a, uh, and here you see the actual path to it. It's the G drive. Um, again, in DOSBox, I had mounted the G drive as the C drive. Um, so things look a little bit different as far as the path, but it is the same exact thing. Um, so obviously this is kind of the league data tab. It says, it says so right there, right? So this is kind of the same scene, same thing we saw in the DOS program, except that you have you know check boxes to turn things on instead of yes or no, and you can enter your your information here. We have our conferences and our divisions, team data. You can uh, have a drop down, pull up your team. So it's Edmonton, right? Here's our team uh, city name with the colors and the nickname, the the uh, arena, and let's look at Boston real quick. Yeah, 191, so I was off by a few feet, but uh, obviously the ice there is smaller. Uh, Chicago, also smaller, smaller ice. So it's nice that, that, that that's in there. You know, I think that's a neat little feature. Um, and then we have our real versus, uh, app, real versus, as they call it, app here. I think they called it... Um, shoot, I don't remember now, but it was a computer, I think. Real and computer on uh, the DOS program and again same numbers obviously uh, but you get a little bit more info here too you get a, a last 10 and uh, the home road splits divisional splits overtime uh, they didn't have overtime that season so there are no overtime results their longest winning streak of the season or current streak they obviously they finished with a tie in their most recent game so there there is no current winning streak uh, numbers after two periods. Um, so that's just kind of neat stuff that it pulls out of the data because it can look back and see what each game's result was. And then we have our result uh, roster and lines. Again, this is sim somewhat similar to what we saw because here's our ratings, same ratings. Um, but you also see the statistics here, and these are the real statistics. And then down here you have your ability to create your lines. It'll count everything for you and tell you how many uh, active forwards, defensemen, goalies you have, uh, 20 total players, how many inactive, and the total for the entire team. Um, you can set your forechecking intensity here uh, on a 1 to 5 range, I believe it is. Um, and then you have uh, wear, like the zones on the ice, so neutral, neutral zone, offensive zone, defensive zone. Um, and then shifts and you can pick your starting goalie that's pretty simple and here's where you set your lines you can see there are some duplicates there's a setting I believe to uh, whether you allow players to be on more than one line I think that's in here I know it's in another game that I'll talk about later but just kind of give you an idea of, of the, you know how this makes things easier and here's our strategies and line weights so this is the same thing we saw in DOS except this is a whole lot easier to work with because you can easily pick and choose where you want to um, enter a value and this is based on you know your opposition down here as far as you know when their line one is out I want my my line one out or whatever it may be um, so you have that ability and then here's where you would export and then it creates a file that you can then send out to the commissioner 
Um, there are things you can look at here. So uh, you can, this is the roster manager. If we wanted to make a trade, you know, you could do that pretty easily. Um, you just pick your two teams and you can trade. Okay, and we also have, and it went to another window. So here we have league stats. And then a box score generator as well. So this is a very useful program. Um, the version I used back in the late 90s was not as um, slick as this one. All the functionality, um, most of the functionality was there. Some of this stuff up here, uh, the box score generator was, I believe, a second, a different program, secondary kind of a helper program. Um, because this was obviously back in like the Windows 98 days or even Windows 3.1. Windows 95, you know, um, old, older versions of Windows. So, um, but the, the, the gist is, is, has been the same since that time. And this program is still out, still out there, still available. I'm running it on Windows, uh, Windows 11. So it does run on current generation hardware and uh, operating system. And uh, it's very useful as far as having something to help with your Apple League. So we're going to move on to something something else here and um, that's it for the for the app of hockey again a good game really good game great great accuracy great as a replay engine just not and in and even to do a draft league this is this is a great game if you have um, if you have the game and you have the seasons uh, you also have the ability to create your own seasons you enter statistics uh, and it'll generate some of the ratings for you and then you can tweak and obviously some of the ratings you need to enter yourself with defense and so on um, but yeah excellent game I do recommend it if you can get it it's not as easy to get as uh, say hat trick would be but it is it is out there and there are places where you can find it I'm pretty sure so I decided that ultimately, because this video is getting pretty long, that I would just kind of split it into two pieces and wrap this up now as part one, where we looked at games from the 90s. Um, uh, both both those games, uh, Hafner Hat Trick Hockey and APA Pro Hockey are outstanding games. I recommend them. Um, as long as you're willing to deal with you know the, the, the necessities of, of running them because they're DOS programs. You would have to run them in a virtual environment like a DOS box or VDOS or, um, you know, something along those lines and deal with, you know, no, no GUI, basically, uh, no mouse support. It's all keyboard driven, um, which isn't a problem. It's just, you know, a little bit of a thing that you would have to get adjusted to. Um, and it's not as smooth and easy as, you know, working with something where you can click on a box and enter a value and, and be good. Um, both those games will give you great results. Um, they have the benefit of if you can find them, essentially they're free because neither one is actually being produced and sold any longer. Um, I'm not sure what the co copyright law is on those. I actually own both both those games um, that I bought long, long ago. So, um, But I do know that they are available online. Um, if you search around a little bit, you can find them. There is a Facebook group for Hafner Games where you can um, probably find those games and get those games. Uh, APA might be a little bit tougher. Back when there were Yahoo groups, there was a group for APA Hockey um, that had some of the, the programs. Um, the, the commissioner program I found pretty easily um, because I couldn't find my old copy of it, but I, I did find it online just the other day, so it's very easy to find that still. Um, so again, if you're interested in either of those games, both very, very good games. Um, in part two, what we'll do is we'll look at something um, a little bit older again, um, but from <laughs> from this century, and uh, then maybe one or two more games. With the uh, the last game being the uh, the game that I chose to use for my Figment League, and um, you know after that we'll see where we go. Um, I'd like to talk about a war game or two, but eventually we're going to talk about football and basketball, and we'll talk more about the, the baseball game and the baseball league and. And look at some other things and hopefully um, you've enjoyed watching this um, please subscribe if you have not uh, again this is a brand new channel I'm trying to uh, you know get my viewership levels up get my subscriptions up kind of get um, something going here built on word of mouth or whatever it may be uh, if you found this by you know searching 
around on YouTube. I know there are millions of choices on YouTube. Uh, hopefully, you know, some this has been at least somewhat entertaining, uh, something interesting to look at these games from, you know, 30 years ago. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed watching again. And, you know, hopefully you'll come back for part two. Even if you don't subscribe, come back for part two. And I'll look at some other games that you may not have played yet. And um, maybe you'll find something that you'll get some enjoyment out of. Thanks again and take care.